and now we will learn how to record and manage security deposits from tenants. Security deposits are an amount paid at the beginning of the stay, or if there's a lease, it's an amount paid at the beginning of the lease. Usually the amount of one month's rent is the money amount of the security deposit. But of course, it could be different from one situation to another. The security deposit is not money given to the landlord for time that the tenant stayed in the unit or the dwelling. It's usually meant to cover costs for potential damage to the property by the tenant during the stay. In practical terms, there's usually no need to separate them from the other funds that you received from the tenant. It's okay to include them in your unearned rent. Why? Because when a tenant moves out, the amount owed to the tenant, or the amount owed to you from the tenant, is always going to be the same amount. Whatever money they gave you, minus whatever time they stayed, minus whatever damages. And it never really matters at the end how much of the money they gave you was rent and how much was security deposit. This is going to be the calculation to determine who gets the refund and how much. So the amount that was originally designated as the security deposit is irrelevant. Okay. You could always look at the tenant balance detail and know how much of the balance is the security deposit. Now let me give you a quick example. If we go here to the tenant balance detail, well you know very well that if Donna paid you in advance and her balance is 4800 and you can see Donna's rent is 1200 a month, then you know of the 4800 that Donna paid you in advance that she hasn't stayed yet, 1200 is the security deposit, and you just subtract. So what's that? 3600 she paid in advance, and the other 1200 is security deposit. It's not hard to figure out. Obviously, if someone like Dave, with someone like Dave, if his rent is 1000 a month, that means that 1000 is the deposit, and you owe him five months' rent of staying. Okay? Now, in a case like Johnny, where you know his balance goes, you know his balance is exactly the security deposit over here, but this other Nancy, not the Nancy we're doing, if it's a positive balance, you know what that means? If a tenant has a positive number as a balance in this in this report, you know it's supposed to be the tenant's balance detail, it means that not only did they stay past the rent that they paid for, they also stayed past their security deposit if the balance is positive. So it's just knowing about how to interpret the report and understanding the idea of the security deposit, and you don't really have to separate them. However, why would we need to separate the deposit if we're doing accounting and bookkeeping for your properties? Well, some management companies have a detail uh, reporting have detailed reporting requirements that requires that they separate the amount given and designated as a deposit depending on whom they're reporting to. Some property owners are required to even physically keep separate the cash security from the tenant and the money from the monthly rent. That there's a physically a separate fund and they might be required to do that. There might be some other legal issues regarding what should be paid as rent and what should be paid as security deposit. So here are the steps to actually setting up the security deposits or setting up your QuickBooks to be able to record and manage security deposits as separate amounts received from tenants. Okay, so first we create a bank type of account called Security Deposit Fund. And this account will represent the money that is physically aside for the security deposit. Well, that's very simple. We go to the chart of accounts in the bottom left, account new, just like we learned in the previous videos, and we make a bank type of account, and then what is the suggested name? Security Deposit Fund. So we go here and we type Security, oops, I'll make it a capital so that we can distinguish it from the other accounts. Security Deposit 
fund. Now, click Save and New, and again, that will represent the money we physically put aside. Now, you don't have to do this, but you could create another accounts receivable type of account called unearned security deposits. You only need this one if you don't want to keep the deposits with the rest of the unearned payments from tenants. So you want your unearned rental income to reflect only unearned rental income, and these would be unearned security deposits. So if you don't like, if you don't like um, lumping them in with the rest of the unearned money, then you can separate it out. Now, you only use these two accounts for the very first transaction you ever have with the tenant and the very last transaction you have with the tenant and I'm going to demonstrate that step by step and usually the balance of both of these accounts are the same so let's go ahead and create that it's an accounts receivable type of account and what did we say it's called unearned security deposits so let's call it unearned security deposits okay save and close good now in our first example let's imagine that on August 1 Nancy moves into apartment 6 F just like she did in the previous video her rent is a thousand a month as we remember but let's imagine on August 1 she paid us three thousand and that three thousand is for the security deposit and the first month's rent and the last month's rent and she gave us check number 161 you must enter the deposit in a separate transaction from the rest of the rent and that'll help the numbers come out the way you would like so right now we don't have those two accounts that we just created on our trial balance but if we do this if we open the receive payment window and we make sure it's August 1 for 2017. What we have to do here is make sure that the account receivable account says unearned security deposits and that the bank type of account says security deposit fund. These are the two accounts you have to select for the separate transaction of recording only the security deposit. So even though we got check, even though the, the amount of check 161 is 3,000 that we received from Nancy, the amount of this check is 3,000, but we're only recording it as 1,000 for the first one. Okay? So we're going to record this twice. We're going to put this date and this check number twice. The first one will go into this account and that account. Okay? Save and close. Click OK, don't worry. Now the trial balance shows only security deposit fund having 1,000 and unearned security deposits 1,000. But we're not finished. We're not finished with the very same transaction regarding Nancy. Okay? Because on the same date, with the same check number, oops, with the same check number, very important, this second amount for 2,000 is actual rent. So that would go into the normal bank account and physically it'll go into the normal bank account and it goes into the regular unearned rental income not the security deposit for 2000 save and close and click OK so now when we do that we can see uh, that the um, that the security deposit fund should only have a thousand and then the unearned rent went up by the other two thousand and the security and the unearned security deposit only a thousand because the second one that I put in was regular rent that goes into unearned rent and regular bank account. So now it will be very clear on the tenant's balance detail that we received three thousand on August one, and by August one we haven't done anything for Nancy yet. She hasn't stayed for any period of time, so we did not earn her rent as of August 1 and she did not damage property so we don't need to take her security deposit so at the minute Nancy gives us 3000 we owe her that 3000 2000 of which is owed to her for future uh, uh, you know that for future month stay so that if she moves out right now 
August 2, we have to give this back to her for whatever reason. And then, of course, the security deposit, we also have to give back to her if she doesn't damage any property before moving out. So technically, she hasn't damaged any property and hasn't stayed. So technically, we owe her 3000 until these things happen. So that's why, as of August 1, her balance is negative 3000 But it's clear that 2000 of check number 161 is for regular rent, and the other 1000 which was part of this very same check 161, is unearned security deposit. And I think it will be clear after this second example. Let's imagine that Helen moves into apartment 7L. Her rent is 500 a month, and she gave us 1500 Security, first month and last month, with check number 262. You would do it the exact same way. Separate the first 500 as security in the first transaction. So, we go to payment, August 1, and we choose Helen. I already put her on the list off camera to save time. Now, Helen gave us 500 in security deposit. Now, watch this. The first one we enter is only for the security deposit. The bank type of account is the security deposit fund, because that's where the physical money is going. And the, unearned, the account receivable type of account is unearned security deposit. So your receivable account and your bank account both say security deposit for only the amount of the security deposit, even though it's part of a check where the whole amount of the check is more, 262. So even though check 262 is a 1500, we're putting in 500 first on the same date with the two security deposit accounts, save and new, click OK. Then do the exact same thing for the exact same tenant on the exact same date with the exact same check number, except you're going to put the money amount of only the rent up here and you're going to make the bank account the normal account that the money goes into, and you'll make the receivable account the regular unearned rent, because a thousand is unearned rent on the day that she moves in. Now, after we click save and close and click OK, now we can open up the trial balance and we can see unearned rental. Well, unearned security deposits is 1,500. Unearned rent is 12,400. So if we kick everybody out tomorrow and nobody broke anything, we have to pay back all of these two. And of course, the security deposit fund should physically, physically be holding 1500 if we are required to keep it separate from the rest of the funds. And that's how you do it. One final note, if you want to learn how to apply deposits to damages, and then refund the remaining deposit. Both require that you select the accounts that were made in this video. So on the day they move out, you will follow the procedures of the two videos that will follow this one. One of them will show you how to, how to apply deposit for damages, and the other will show you how to write a refund check for the remaining deposit. But what you must remember is, when you apply the damages, and when you write the refund check, you have to select both of the deposit-related accounts